thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hello, brothers and sisters. And hello, the visitors here. Um, I'm Enesh Wong. It's my privilege this morning uh, to talk to you, uh, to give a testimony of how God works through this uh, Gideon ministry. Many of you know Gideon, right? Um, because some, some guys call us a Bible man. <laughs> uh, this morning, come with me, is my brother's uh, team. And team uh, retired from business. Uh, uh, I'm teaching in the National Taiwan University, not in physics, but in the uh, um, electrical engineering. Uh, so my specialty is laser, fiber, those kind of weird stuff. <laughs> okay, um, I'm also uh, teaching leaders in Bible, um, Bible study fellowship. Um, so this morning, I would like to um, give you a highlight of what we're doing uh, in, in the Gideon's ministries, okay? So next slide, please. Many of you, when you see this picture, you immediately remind you of the movie, Titanic, right? Titanic sank in 1912, and this movie was touching. Um, however, the real story is this. You know, when the survivors recalled the tragedy, they repeated it, said a group of Christians, made a different choice so that their life could be spared. When the action occurred, there were simply too many people there. They were on the deck. They are rushing to the uh, to live boat in order to get on. So they push one another in order to get a seat. However, you know, there are just a few live boat. Uh, and here comes a passenger. This passenger's name is called John Harper. He was there because he was invited to come to Chicago to attend a Moody Memorial Church there in order for evangelical meetings. And according to the survivors from this uh, accident, John came out from the crowd and yelled to the people before the lifeboats. He said, any of you are Christian, please arise and step forward. All were shocked, but did not stop working their ways for escape, and none aroused. Then the, past, then the pastor shouted again, Arise, Christians! We have been saved in Jesus, leaving seats to those who have seen, who have not. Now, it worked this time. You see, tens of Christians came out from the crowd, leaving the opportunity to the others. Pastor John Harper call out even more Christians from all directions to gather on the deck. And they were hand in hand with each other in circle. Pastor Harper then formally declared, brothers and sisters, we may lose life any moment, but we have believed in Jesus Christ and have eternal hope. Do not be afraid. There are many on this ship, however, do not believe in Jesus. If they are not saved, they will perish eternally. If we do not com compete them with escaped equipment, they will have chance to hear the gospel and be saved. And then the group of Christians were moved and took a unified response. They continue hand in hand and singing a hymn, maybe you heard from the movie. The hymn is Close to Thee, Nearer My God to See. The hymn touched the hearts of the other passengers, and now they were in order and under the instruction of the crewmen. They led ladies and chosen to board the lifeboats first. And the music team came out in suit 
and play the instrument for him. Finally, the boiler exploded. Electricity broke out. The giant te Titanic cut into halves. And these Christians, musicians, him, were all together engulfed in the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Ocean. When news came to the States, the church host a, a memorial service for the pastor harbor and the sermon message once again reminded all the participants of one truth that Christians should arise and stand firm to give beautiful testimony for Jesus Christ because there is no other name only us on all creations can be you and me to salvation Likewise, today it is time to witness Jesus Christ. We need to stand firm and give good testimony for the Lord. Have you heard the calling from the Lord? Next slide, please. John chapter 9, verse 4. Jesus says, As long as it is day, we must do the works who send men. Night is coming when no one can work. This is an urgency call from our Lord Jesus Christ. Essentially, he calls us, save one more soul. Do you hear our Lord Jesus Christ call it? Next prize, next prize, please. Uh, you see, this picture also reminds you what we read from the book of Genesis. It's talking about God judged with a fraud and favors Noah. You see, just suppose you are one of the family members on the boat and you see the rest of your family and rest of your beloved friends or co-workers. They are drowning. They are drowning. Do you remember the call from the Lord? Are you willing? Are you willing to live along with your family members in this community? Perhaps it's minority. But listen, a voice, a voice of hope, a voice of good news that speaks of God's deliverance through Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. My talk is entitled Arise and Build. You see, in 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 19, the Bible says, Now set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. You see, this is the word from De King David. King David fought all his life. A he always has heart because he wants to build a, the house for God. But God, in his revelation to David, and said in chapter 22, verse 6 to 7, this is the word he talked to his son, Solomon. He said this, Then he called for his son, Solomon, and charged him to build a house for the Lord the God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had it in my heart to build a house for the name of the Lord my God. But this word of the Lord came to me. You have shed much blood and fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name because you have shed too much blood on the earth in my sight. So David knew he is not entitled to build a sanctuary for the Lord. Even he is a king. Even he's a mighty warrior. Even in his life experience, he experienced goodness. He has also experienced the bitterness of his long in life. However, when God's will come to him, he knows he needs to follow. He needs to obey. Because it is his love for the Lord that he obey God's will. So he won't extend his power 
it won't take further in order to take in charge of building the house for the Lord. However, he prepared. He prepared all kinds of materials. Simply, he wants his son and also his leaders to unite together in order to glorify God's name. Next slide, please. So you see, important thing is the two key words. Set your mind and heart to seek the law, your God. How can we do that? We need to call on God's name. We need to call on His name. And we need to walk with Him. It's not easy because the world is filled with trap, with temptations. It will, stray, it, will, it will make us go astray. However, God is always our shepherd, our guide, is always our anchor. So when we determine to walk with him, when we determine we will run to him, he will get closer to us. Next thing, we need to arise and build a sanctuary for the Lord. This is a beautiful church. And you are one family. What we should do? We should arise and build God's house. How can we do that? Pass the baton. Pass the baton. Raise up the next generation so they can be godly ones. And also unite generations to glorify his name. Do you see this picture? So these little boys, what in his hands is a book of Bible. And he just passed to those who are bigger than him in order to, to share the good news. This is exactly what we should do. Pass the baton to the next generations. Next slide, please. Now, we are serving in this ministry. It's called the Gideon International. This is a ministry to call Christians to arise and build. The objective is to win souls through the Lord Jesus Christ through the distributions of the Word of God. It has been established for 121 years. And all over the countries, we have 200, more than 200 countries uh, that belong to these ministries. Uh, members are all from Protestant churches of different denominations, different jobs. Me, I'm teaching in the universities. I never, I never be a salesman. I still remember the first day when I was standing on the gate of my university. I tried to pass the Bible to the students who maybe walk by or maybe biking by, and I'm afraid. Why is that? Because I never before to do this things. Some students stop by and say, teacher, what are you doing? I say, oh, well, I'm, I'm trying to pass it. I'm, I'm going to give you a good, bi- good book. I forget to mention this Bible, right? And especially when I was refused by my students, I'm, in my mind I say, hmm, I should write down your name. But over the years, through this ministry, my strength increased. I become bold because it is my duty to speak for God, to pass the God's words. And it is God who can work out. It's not me. It's not me. Next slide, please. Well, here's just a statistic. Okay. So it tells us this has been a long time ministry. And he has impacted many lives. Okay, next slide, please. So, Book of Mark and Book of Matthew tells us the Great Commission. Go into the world. Go into the world in order to share the gospel. And one way to share the gospel is to use the Bible to get attention of the passengers or the people who pass by. So the Gideon's, Gideon's ministry is actually is an extension arm of our church. Gideon's work in five different ministries, like church, 
may be hard to access. For example, like in a hospital, in a prison, in a military units, in a police station, in a hotel, and so on and so forth. And even schools, even schools. Many years ago, many years ago, because this government um, organization is called Ministry of Education, they has a special program on, for and send, it, send it letters to all the uh, uh, middle and uh, middle high schools. They want to they want to host this so-called week, weekly speech and invite those distinguished people in the society. And we happen to have this opportunity. So we go to every middle school and high school. And there, we won't force students to take the Bible. We simply talk about a subject. For example, how do you deal with, um, how do you deal with a boy and girl's relationship? How do you overcome the failures using this topic and embed it with <coughs> biblical message? And finally, the speaker will invite all the students. If you are curious about what I'm talking about, the Bible, you can come forward. And here we have Bible. They are freely given to you. So this is a great opportunity. and has impacted many, many lives. Next slide, please. Here is the, my brothers and sisters working together as co-workers. Maybe you can tell this is the gate of the, my university, National Taiwan University. And we're also working along the MRT. Okay. So next time, we see some people from Teams Camp. Um, they are there to distribute Bibles. You simply say, good job, good job, keep going. And maybe you can also have some Bibles from team or some co-workers so that you can come to your schools or come to here or come, go to your office and share the good news because now you have God's word in your hand and you can tell them the story. Next slide, please. You see, we also have a special program we call International Scripture Breeze. And this happens early this year. You know, we are now suffer from the epidemic. However, in February, in February, a group of Gideon people, they're coming from different countries, United States, Germany, they went to this uh, resort. This is called uh, Cebu, and also Manila in Philippines. And a total of more than 900,000 copies of Bible delivered. And it's here, you can see the picture. Okay, now next slide, please. Interestingly, uh, you know this guy, right? <laughs> it's Roddy, right? But he, what in his hand is a Gideon Bible. And 217, he declared January is the National Bible Month. And from that year on, while he is still in position, there has been go on and on. Isn't that wonderful? When I would pray for Taiwan, I pray for the states. So maybe uh, the president, here and there, they will designate a special month for the National Bible Month. Next slide, please. And also, not only in Philippines, but also in different countries. We send people there. They are volunteer in order to serve the people, in order to pass the message of God. Next slide, please. You see, this picture happens in Kenya. When the Gideon or the Bible men go there, they say, who wants the Bible? Everybody raise their hand. You know why? Because while they are in the elementary school, they could not afford a new book. And the Bible, perhaps, is their, in their life, the first new book, because it's completely new. So everyone raise their hand. You see, the God's word 
quench their thirst, their hunger, and meet their needs. And that's exactly what we need to, we need to do. We need to do. Um, now, next slide, please. This is God's word from the book Isaiah. Let me give you a testimony. Uh, this testimony was given by a lady in the, uh, um, in the uh, International um, Gideon Conference. Okay. This is what described. She said, Sandra, actually her mom, when her mom was young, she was a fashion model. A lot of time, he wa she was young and rich. And she says, she's now on an airplane, heading to Las Vegas from half old Connecticut. During World War II, Sandra's mom fled from Europe to the States because of persecutions. Sandra was raised in an Orthodox Jewish family, strictly follow Jewish traditions. As a little girl, she remembered two things in her life. One is Hanukkah, because that's the moment they need to light the, the candle. Second thing is Christmas. Because that time, she could have wish. She could write down a wish to Santa Claus. And that was the only time she was allowed to sing hymns together with the choir. But she remember, she remember one thing, because her mom told, told, she, told her strictly, you can sing the hymn, but when the words come to this name, it's called Jesus, you need to hum it over. You should not speak the name. So it's like, da, 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 that name is Jesus. And so she say, hum over. So she do not know why, but she follow her mom's direction. And other things, she was not allowed to make friends with Christians. But something happened beyond her mom's control. She grew up and went to school and in college. She met this young man, James Storm. She fell in love with him. And he was a Christian. He was from Florida. And many times, her boyfriend shared a gospel, Jesus story. She rejected. She just loved it. Also, when her boyfriend wants to read together with the Bible with him, she said, no, because her mom told him, told her, never touch the Bible, never touch the Bible. Now, despite this Jesus issue, their love grew stronger and stronger. One day, James boldly proposed to marry her, and she did not want, she did not know what to do. So James decided to come from Florida to Connecticut and to persuade her mom for marriage approval. Perhaps you know the ending. It was not a happy ending because her mom rejected him. And her mom told Sandra, you have better chance to marry another man. So what happens? Now Sandra was on an airplane heading to Las Vegas because her mood was terrible. She was simply torn by love for his bo her boyfriend and love for her family. So once 
she left the airport. She jumped into a taxi and then told the driver, take me into anywhere. What happened? Right? So the driver said, okay, I will take you to the best hotel in this town, Fremont. Okay. So they took there. And when registered, entered her room, she was released because now no one, my mom is far away, right? So she's free. And so she took a shower. And then she wants to take a nap. But she saw a book on the, a small table by the bed. And that book says the Bible, the Holy Bible. And she now say, well, my mom is not here. So this is a good chance, <laughs> right? I want to see why, why I should not touch this book. So you know why? She opened it up, and it's a Gideon Bible. Gideon Bible is only contains New Testament and just a few books of Old Testament at the end. So when she flipped over the first page, to her surprise, she saw a bunch of names because it's from Matthew chapter 1, and you know that. This is a genealogy, a long list. It's a head deck for Christians. <laughs> but it's so familiar to this Jewish girl. She read it through one by one. Wow, surprise. They say, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. How can I, how, how can, why should I not read it? And she continued to read on. And then she find in verse 16, chapter 1, about this man, Jesus. And she read it. Wow, Jesus is a Jewish boy? To her surprise, right? So she continued to stay in her room. And then she continued to read to, from page 1 to the entire New Testament. She finished reading through this Gideon Bible. For the first time, she spoke the name Jesus. And she said, I believe you, the Messiah. This is just the beginning of the amazing story. If you want to know, is there any passion, if there are any customers that stay in a hotel in Las Vegas and stay for five days without leaving her room, without going down to casino. She's the one. After her reading, she pack up and then go home. It's just the beginning of this amazing journey. Over the next year, few years, she acknowledged Jesus is a provider, comforter, counselor, sustainer, healer, all because of them, through the seed lovely placed by Gideon's members in the hotel. Now, let me take the snapshots of what's going on afterwards. You know, she married James. And one year later, she thought she could be pregnant, but there's no indication. So she went to see a Jewish doctor, and the Jewish doctor told her, she could never bear a baby and needed to remove the womb because she had some symptom. She prayed to God, to Jesus, desperately, and she boldly asked God for two boys and two girls. <laughs> so your prayer should be bold. When we call on God's name, we walk in his way. You know what? Two years later, after her marriage, the girl, two more years, a boy, two and other years, a boy. And now, two more years, oh, little faith. Little faith. It comes Sandra, this little girl. So the same Jewish doctor delivered all 
her boys and girls when she, he delivered Sandra. He was in tears. He was in tears. And she became, later she became a Christian. And the girl was the one, Sandra, no, Sandra's uh, daughter, speaking testimony for her mom. So when kids were four years old, six years old, eight years old, ten years old, their mom was diagnosed a last stage breast cancer and six weeks to live. Their father, James, begged God to miraculously hear his, uh, his wife, and God did. The cancer was gone. So, many years later, her mom, Sandra, published a book. This book entitled, Do Not Say That Name. Do Not Say That Name. So this is a real story. And this is a simple copy of Bible, Praise in a Hotel. You never know how God will work through his word and through the love of people you donate and through co-workers who put a Bible in different occasions. Next slide, please. Now you see, every year, every year, we need the cost of printing the Bible in Taiwan is roughly 22 million, and half of them, half of them is donated by the Gideon members. Now you may ask how many Gideon members and sisters there? It's somewhere around more than a little bit 2,000, 2,000. And what about the rest? The rest will ask your donations. So much appreciated if you can do so. Next slide, please. How can you help? How can you help? You can help us through the prayer, through prayer. You can pray for us. Next slide, please. You can also join us. You will say, well, I'm a foreigner in Taiwan. How can I join you if you all speak Chinese? <laughs> we have a translator, for example, like Min. You're welcome to join, but you need approval of your pastor. Your pastor. Next slide, please. Finally, you can give your money. Oh, because every dollar you donate will go to printing the Bible. Today, if you're hard for God, you're welcome to donate. And your donation is tax deductible. Next slide, please. In times of crisis, in such time as this epidemic, people need comfort, and comfort can only be found in God's word. So join us to give the hope today. Next slide, please. Let's spread the good news, even in the time of difficulties. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So thank you. And then God's grace and peace be with you all. Let's pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, each time when we read the story about a flood, it reminds us who else are drawing. Father, also each time we read a story about Abraham, about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Father, you also remind us you are just, righteous, and yet you are filled with mercy and grace. Father, enable us to be like Abraham. We persistently plead to you like Abraham six, six times to deal with you because we know your attributes. Father, enable us in this world 
we can walk in your in your path. Father, please shed your light on us. Send us so we can plead for our beloved family members. We can also willing to give because we are freely received from you, your grace, your salvation. Father, thank you. Thank you for this morning putting us together and edified through your word. Enable us, cleanse us to be your servant, to be your ambassadors. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.